Hey everybody. This time, a different guitar topic and genre. It's no big secret that this channel is mostly about rock covers. I did name it Sean McCabe Rocks after all. And it's plain to see that I primarily cover legendary rock guitarists like Eddie Van Halen. All you have to do is look at many of the guitars on my walls. You'll see lots of striped Frankenstrats and other Eddie-style guitars. Those who know me well know that my baby is my 1980 Fender Strat. It's not a Stratocaster, but a very special and limited run edition called the Strat for short. But running a close second to the Strat is the AK-47 of guitars, a Telecaster. Heck, I even built a Frankentelly. But the one I will be playing in this video is my Parts Caster Relic Telecaster. It's an axe that can split all types of wood, so to say. With this guitar, I set out to build a parts caster that would rival the nicest and most expensive genuine Fender Telecasters. I ordered top quality parts and paid attention to all the finer details. Here's a quick rundown. Basswood body, maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, stainless steel frets, ceramic single coil pickup Wilkinson, CTS Pots, Pure Tone Jack, Bone Nut, Vintage Tuners, Orange Drop Treble Bleed Capacitor, Graphite Pickup Cavity Shielding, Unique Lemon Lime Paint Color, and a nice relic. I may own 30 plus guitars for no practical reason beyond the fact that I make YouTube covers and I like to try to match the guitar to the artist. But if I were to leave my man cave here with all of these guitars for an extended period and I had to choose only one guitar to take with me, it would be this Telecaster for sure. It's practically indestructible, almost never goes out of tune unless I drop it on its head and even then it probably still wouldn't break or go out of tune. I can find a tone between the simple bridge and neck pickups to fit the bill for just about any genre of music or type of guitar playing. Speaking of genres of music and types of guitar playing, there's several that get hardly any attention on my channel. They would be country, bluegrass, rockabilly, chicken picking, and jazz. Why is this? Well, there's a few reasons. First, I can't sing with that country twang to save my life. Second, not all that well rehearsed with country guitar playing, chicken picking, finger style, and all the theory behind jazz music. Third, I grew up listening mostly to bands like Led Zeppelin, Van Halen, Rush, Triumph, you know, rock. Playing country and jazz probably wasn't going to get me half as many chicks. But seriously, this does not mean that behind closed doors, I was not listening to the Beatles, John Denver, Steely Dan, and Danny Gatton. That was a quick lick by the Humbler. In the words of Steve Vai, Danny Gatton was a player's guitar player, hailed by both Rolling Stone and guitar player as the greatest unknown guitarist anywhere. His legend has only grown since his untimely suicide in 1994. Along with appreciation for his blinding speed, effortless genre hopping, flawless technique, and never-ending appetite for tinkering and problem solving, Danny Gatton comes closer than anyone else to being the best guitar player that ever lived. Strong words from the great Steve Vai. There's so much more I would like to tell you about Danny Gatton, but I don't want this video to turn into a full-blown biography. For those of you who are interested in his backstory, I urge you to do a Google search. It'll give you newfound appreciation for this true guitar virtuoso, gone way too soon. I'll demonstrate a few more licks of some of those overlooked guitar playing styles on my channel that I mentioned earlier. Let's start with the first commercial single released by Elvis Presley in 1954. That's all right. Scotty Moore was the guitarist who played this instantly recognizable rockabilly riff. It's all right. 
thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's change things up by changing guitars. Had to change Telecasters because the next guitarist I'm going to feature is the OG of all Telecaster guitarists. And he started it all off with, uh, yeah, a red Telecaster. Probably don't need to tell you who it is because you can tell by looking at this guitar. But uh, I'll tell you anyways, James Burton. Yeah, the guy who has played with just about everybody in the music industry, going all the way back to his tenure with Elvis Presley, to Emmylou Harris, to John Denver, and on and on and on. This telly doesn't get quite as much love because, uh, well, it's tough to stack up to number one back there. But it's pretty cool, actually. It's got this thick baseball bat Fender Tele vintage neck and locking tuners. It's also got a Wilkinson three saddle brass bridge and of course all the quality uh, wires and components inside. Now, the song that James Burton set it all off with was way back in 1957 with Suzy Q. A lot of you probably remember the CCR version of Suzy Q, but for me, it doesn't compare to James Burton's version. What he does looks so easy, and it can actually be played with just one finger. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, hold that up like that. <laughs> one finger and uh, your thumb. So what he does is kind of a Chet Atkins-ish, if you will. Um, he keeps that bass line going constantly and then plays the melody here, so kind of like, and see how I keep that going? I would mute it. Eh, better I just go ahead and play this last demonstration. Let's jump into it straight into the DAW, Suzy Q, James Burton. I'll never be able to hold a candle to the late, great Danny Gatton. They don't call him the humbler for nothing. It's probably the best guitar I think I've ever had, honest. I wouldn't say that just to sell them. <laughs> he just took it with such aggression and fire, he took it to another level. Hellified, just hellified, man. <laughs> 16-year-old wunder kid. Danny Gatton was probably the king of all guitar players. The world's greatest unknown guitarist. <laughs> Doesn't really make a lot of sense because every guitarist pretty much knows who he, who he is and was. Music was just at his fingertips. He could just express whatever he was feeling. Chrome on a Cadillac is what I'm hearing. It's electrifying. You know, the whole thing was shimmering. Anything that came to our mind, we did it. We didn't care if it was Frank Zappa or Rosemary Clooney. history of the guitar in one song. He was open to everything. 
you know, I had a terrible time trying to get a major record deal because I played so many different things and they say you have to be categorized into one thing. Why? There's more than one color in nature. They were bowing to him, putting their heads on the ground and bowing to him. He cared about me a lot, and that's why he decided to keep me out of the music business, because it did break his heart. Dan had tremendous happiness. Dan had tremendous stress. Well, if I was talking to another musician, I wanted to warn him about Danny Gatton. I'd say, hey, better get your act together, because this guy's heavy. He could do anything the other guy could do and do it better. But it just takes a long time, real long time. But it's worth it. You know, next to sex, music is best, you know what I mean? And it lasts longer. <laughs> you can't use that, I'll bet. We're recording a live album tonight. So uh, the more you holler, the better we're going to play. That's pretty good.